What's going on guys, I'm Johnny Brook. Welcome back to another Crafted Magazine video. Today I'm building these simple drawer pulls. I'm using these on my J Bates miter saw station, but these would be great for any shop project, maybe some office furniture. Uh, they're very easy to build. I, I built about 20 of them and it took me probably less than three hours, including insulation. So really simple project, stay tuned. First of all, this is a table saw heavy build. If you don't own a table saw, you'd be pretty hard pressed to make some of these cuts. You could use a bandsaw with a fence, but a miter saw would be unsafe due to the small sizes of the pieces. So the first step is setting the miter angle on your table saw to 25 degrees. After setting the angle, make the first cut on one side of your pieces. One thing to note here, you want the side you want facing out to be facing up on the table saw. Basically make sure the pretty side is facing up. The final dimensions of these drawer pulls is four and a half inches by one and a half inches, but the width isn't important yet. You just want the angle cut on one side of the piece. After you've got the 25 degree angle cut on one side of all your pieces, set your fence to an inch and a half, turn your pieces 180 degrees horizontally, and cut the 25 degree angle into the other side. These two cuts create the angles on the long edges of the drawer pulls. I came up with the inch and a half height just by trying out different sizes. This size is comfortable with my hands, but you can definitely customize the sizing to fit your hands. After finishing the long edges, I cross cut the miters into the short edges. I'm using an Incra miter gauge here, but you can definitely use your stock miter gauge. This is just a 90 degree cross cut. Set up your miter gauge in the miter slot to the left side of the blade and flip your drawer pulls over so that the back side is facing up. Make your cuts so that the 25 degree miter is cut into one side of the pull. Again, width doesn't matter on these first cuts. We're just establishing one edge. Also one safety note here, since the cutoff pieces end up resting on the blade, they will almost always shoot back at you. Make sure you're wearing your safety glasses here. These small pieces don't really have enough mass to do any real damage to your body or anything, and I had a few hit me with no issue, but just make sure you're being safe. After making the cross cuts on one side of all the pulls, turn your piece 180 degrees and set up a stop block at four and a half inches. If you don't have a fancy miter gauge like me, you can just use a piece of scrap wood and a clamp to set up a stop block on your stock miter gauge. Do not, however, use your table saw fence for these cuts. That would be asking for kickback. Make the same cross cut on this side of all the drawer pulls and you'll end up with something like these. In this shot, you're seeing the back of the drawer pulls and you can start to see how they're going to look when they're finished. Next, I rounded over all the edges of the drawer pulls at the router table. I used an eighth inch radius round over bit from white side. It would be tough to do this with a handheld router as there isn't much of a surface to support the router. And if you don't own a router table or a router, you could definitely just sand the edges instead of using a round over bit. After rounding over the edges, I sanded them all with these Rockler Contour sanding grips with 120 grit sandpaper. This really just helped to clean up all the edges and remove any stray pieces of splintered wood. Next, I marked the center line on the front of the drawer pulls, both horizontally and vertically. I used a Veritas marking gauge here, but you could also use calipers to scratch in the lines or a combination square and a pencil to draw on the lines. These lines will be used with the Rockler drawer pull jigget system to mark the places where the holes are drilled into the drawer pulls. I lined up the center line of the jigget system and lined up the horizontal line with the two and a half inch hole spacing and marked the hole placement with the center punch that's included with the jigget system. I drilled holes into the drawer pulls at the drill press. The bit size will be dependent on the size of the screw you use to attach your drawer pulls. I'm using number 10 screws, so I used a 7 64 inch drill bit. Also make sure to use a scrap piece beneath your drawer pulls to avoid blowout. After drilling the holes into the drawer pulls, I used the jigget template again to mark the holes in the drawer fronts. Basically, you line up the center line of the jig with the vertical center of your drawer and then line up the holes that correspond to your drawer pulls, in this instance, the two and a half inch holes with the horizontal center of your drawer. Mark your hole placement with a center punch and then drill holes for your screws. Again, I used a 7 64 inch drill bit here. If you wanted to attach the hardware from the inside of the drawer, you could mark the center lines on the back of the drawer pulls instead of the front and drill a hole so they don't go all the way through the pull and then do the same marking on the drawer faces, drilling holes all the way through the faces and then you could just attach the screws from the inside. That way the hardware would be hidden. Since this is a shop project though, I don't really care that the screws are showing and also most of these drawers are already full of stuff so installing the pulls from the inside would have been pretty annoying. 
All right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the project. I'm really happy with the way they turned out. Again, they cost me nothing, so that's the best kind of project in my books. So if you enjoyed this video, uh, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. We're going to be bringing you new woodworking, metalworking, and making content every Monday. And then on Thursdays, we've got our weekly vlog. So go ahead and get subscribed. If you really are digging what we're doing, I would love some support on Patreon. Uh, that's the new platform we're trying out to see if we can get some financial support. Uh, this is obviously an expensive thing to run, so every little bit helps. If I had a dollar a month from every subscriber, I'd be making enough to make this full-time job. So thank you guys all for watching, and until next time, happy building.